The United Kingdom is developing the Type 83 destroyer, a giant warship weighing 216 tons, measuring 216 meters long and 24 meters wide. It has been included in a UK shipbuilding overhaul and could begin replacing Type 45s in the late 2030s. The Type 83 is expected to have three primary roles anti air warfare, anti ballistic missile defense, and land attack cruise missiles. According to Jeremy Quinn, Minister of State for Defense, the Type 83 will replace the aging Type 45 destroyers when they retire in the late 2030s. We anticipate that the Type 83 concept phase will begin in the coming years, followed by the assessment phase. The Royal Navy's two largest shipbuilding projects are currently eight highly sophisticated Type 26 anti-submarine frigates being built in Glasgow by BAE Systems and five Type 31 general-purpose frigates destined for secondary missions. However, as construction on the frigates concludes, there will be an opportunity to begin work on the replacements for the Navy's six Type 45 air defense destroyers before their planned retirement in 2035 to 2038. The Type 45 weighs 9,400 tons standard and is based on the Sea Viper system, which combines a 250-mile range Samson ESA radar with 48 Aster-15 and 30 medium and long-range surface-to-air missiles packed into silver vertical launch cells. Using the Type 26 hull would reduce design costs and allow for a smooth technical and industrial transition from Type 26 to Type 83 construction. However, to better balance a high-mounted radar for air defense and accommodate more powerful propulsion systems, the Type 26's hull may need to be enlarged. While the Ministry of Defense has provided no information about the Type 83, the name itself is ominous. Because the Type 45 destroyer succeeded the Type 42, its successor was expected to be the Type 46 or something similar. Instead, the Type 83 designation refers to a one-of-a-kind Type 82 destroyer built by the UK during the Cold War. The Type 83 designation alludes to the Type 82's original concept as a larger warship designed to accompany British carriers. That is consistent with London's recently stated intention to focus more on the Pacific, with periodic long-range deployments of the Royal Navy's two Queen Elizabeth-class carriers, equipped with F-35B stealth jump jets on deck, serving as the centerpiece of that effort. However, the Type 82's legacy suggests the Type 83 may have secondary capabilities, such as anti-submarine warfare, drone operations and land attack missiles. One key feature that is likely to be considered is the ability to use directed energy weapons such as lasers to disable incoming drones and missiles at a negligible cost per shot, potentially critical for defeating future swarming attacks. Such weapons, on the other hand, have high electrical power requirements, necessitating increased power generation and revised cabling. A future destroyer will almost certainly have the capability to deploy its own unmanned aerial lanner submarine drones for maritime surveillance, if not anti-submarine warfare and sea mine countermeasures. Most importantly, there is the issue of the Type 83's sensors and missile armament, which could be an evolution of the current Sea Viper system or an entirely new system. In any case, the Royal Navy may want not only more missile cells, the most recent US and Chinese destroyers have twice as many as the Type 45, but also deeper or wider ones to accommodate larger land attack cruise missiles or longer range anti-ballistic missile interceptors. Due to the proliferation of anti-ship ballistic missiles like China's DF-21D and DF-26B, which can attack warships from 1,000 miles away or further, anti-ballistic missile capability is arguably a requirement for today's air defense warships. To intercept short- and medium-range ballistic missiles, the Type 45 can currently carry Aster-30 missiles in its 5-meter-deep silver A-50 cells. 
The A-50 is said to be compatible with the upcoming Aster-30 Block II anti-ballistic missiles, which can engage intermediate-range ballistic missiles over a wide area. The use of the 7-meter deep silver A-70 system, on the other hand, could allow the Type 83 to develop U.S. missiles, particularly the SM-3 Block II and SM-6, which is a secondary surface attack capability. The A-70 can also carry Scalp Storm Shadow Land Attack Cruise Missiles, which the UK currently only carries on aircraft. The integration of a Storm Shadow or Tomahawk missile would provide the Type 83 with land attack capability, which the Royal Navy intends to restore to its surface ships. The vertical cells of the Type 83 could also house anti-ship missiles, allowing the Royal Navy to tailor the mix of anti-air and anti-ship weapons to the mission, rather than relying on external Harpoon anti-ship launchers. Because the United Kingdom and France are working on a silver-compatible hypersonic future cruise anti-ship weapon that will enter service in the 2030s. The sea-skimming missile's warheads could be split to strike up to three ships over 180 miles away. Overall, a large new destroyer could enable a wide range of weapon and sensor configurations. However, additional capabilities increase the cost, complexity, and weight of the destroyer, potentially reducing its availability for its primary mission of protecting carrier strike groups. The Royal Navy must decide how to strike a balance between packing in more capabilities to maximize versatility and designing the destroyer for a specific mission to control costs and weight. BAE Systems has urged the Royal Navy to begin discussions with industry as soon as possible about the Type 83 and Type 32 vessels that will be part of the UK's future plans. According to the company, technology for the new designs could be demonstrated on the current fleet, and work toward a net zero fleet could bring the Navy in line with climate initiatives. The design of Type 45 replacements is a difficult task because the above water battle space is becoming increasingly dangerous and complex. A new generation of weapons, particularly railguns and hypersonic and ballistic missiles, will increasingly put surface combatants at risk. Any platform that is going to provide a task group with credible defense against these threats will inevitably have to be sophisticated, large, and expensive.